Season soccer, big game here. Manchester United versus Liverpool. Eric Ten Hag, of course, taking over. Manchester United, 12th minute, no score. United on the attack. Jaden Sancho in the box finds the ball. Uh, he's going to fire and score here. Thomas Rongan, what do you think of this? <laughs> Liverpool's defense still asleep in Bangkok, but Sancho, a chance to shine, by the way, with the new coach. Yeah, uh, 30th minute, Liverpool can't clear. Uh, this one, Fred sailing it over Allison. Oh, a delicious lob by Fred. Brian Tully's favorite player, by the way. Audacious lob. Love that. There it is. Here's the replay of it as well. Yeah, uh, Liverpool, you know, still still in preseason form here. United uh, trying to look like they're in Premier League form. 33rd minute, oh. United's Anthony Martial makes the steal, takes it inside the box, and uh, Allison's getting beat again here, TR. Yeah, Reese Williams with, uh, with a colossal mistake. And as you said, you know, Martial just says, thanks for coming. 76, United once again on the attack. Facundo Palistri. Yeah. Back to Ahmad Diallo, who passes it back to Palistri for the goal. Past Adrian in goal this time. 20 year old Uruguayan. Yeah. Making an impact on his new coach, Ten Hag. Yes, a nice four. Nice play, Jeremy. A 4 0 final for Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag, take that victory in the preseason. Shaking hands with Jurgen Klopp at the end there. All right, in terms of. Odds to win the Premier League, Manchester United at 25 to 1. Liverpool up there at, uh, well, I mean, plus 200. And then you City, the favorites, of course, at minus 165. Tottenham ahead of Chelsea. What in the world? Tommy, boy, oh boy. All right, but it's only, you know, it's only. Take the Blues to finish third. <laughs> All right, you heard Thomas Rongan is here with us, our uh, soccer analyst, to talk about uh, the, this preseason game, in particular other soccer musings. Uh, TR, let's start with the United win. Uh, big win for United, but, I mean, come on. It's, yeah, it's, it's early it's doors. It's preseason, do, do, so what's your Just to give you an example, Liverpool used 31 players. And when you build the preseason, it started a week later than Man United due to the fact that they went to the finals in the Champions League. I think Van Dijk just flew in yesterday, played 30 minutes. So everybody got 30 minutes. Then you built to 45. Then you built to 60 and eventually to 90. On the other side, Eric Ten Hag, obviously uh, already ahead of the ball, so to speak, mm -hmm. who's been in preseason for 10 days, played his starters, 45, and another 11 players the next 45. And the goals came in that first half. But it's great for Eric Ten Hag to really put his philosophy his new ideas into this team. And you've seen some of that already in you know, a fairly big game still. This is still Man United versus, uh, versus Liverpool. And, and what I like is the wide areas where players cut in. And that's where Sancho, for instance, can shine. And that's where Sancho can become a starter for this team, which he wasn't last year, obviously. Uh, you look at Fred, because the attack for Air Ten Hag starts at the base. That's why he wants Frankie de Jong. Because Frank Leon is one of the best in terms of the access to start the attack. The overlapping fullbacks, Dalot and, and, and Shaw, obviously, the chemistry between the wide players. That's where a lot of goals came from as well. The controlling direct possession, a little bit different than, than possession for no sake. This is direct control possession for Man United. And slowly you can see Ten Hag's philosophy being implemented. Uh, for this team with a few outstanding performances. And let's keep it with Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag because Cristiano Ronaldo's made it known he doesn't want to be at Old Trafford anymore. Ten Hag coming out saying he's not for sale. Where do you stand with the Ronaldo aspect? Because even though he saved them single-handedly like three or four times last year, TR, you could argue, and many Man United fans argue, he made the team worse last season. Yeah, and this is a very interesting one and the first real test for Ten Hag and, and Ronaldo as well. Ten Hag comes out and says, I want him. Ten Hag says, I spoke to him. And I said, you know what? I want to not build a team around you. I want you to be part of this team going forward. Ronaldo wants Champions League, I'm sure, but not too many suitors. PSG went, uh-uh, no, we got Messi and Bappe Neymar. We can't fit you in there. You're a luxury. You know, Chelsea, uh, too close. No way at Chelsea, because most great teams nowadays are pressing teams. And pressing teams start with your number nine. And you've got to hunt. You've got to be fit. And you've got to be willing to do the dirty work. If I would be Ronaldo or a team, you look at a low-pressure team. Uh, Roma with, with, with Mourinho, obviously. Sit deep, sit deep, and then just counter and use your nine as a spearhead as well. Atletico Madrid, but there's not too many big time teams in the world right now that can afford the luxury of uh, Ronaldo and maybe his wages as well. So interesting to see. Mendes has shopped him, his agent, obviously. Ten Hag says, I want, want him back. 
I'm telling you, I look at that front four right now. That's not going to be the starting front four. Very fluid, great movement in the final third. That won't happen with Ronaldo, who's very much stationary centrally. Gio, do you think we've reached the point where adding Messi, adding Ronaldo to your team is not what it once was? Yeah, yeah. I, I think we're going to talk a little bit later about transfers. You know, it, it's, it's the Hollands of the world, the Mbappes of the world. Those are the future Ballon d'Or guys. Right. Uh, can Messi still play a role for PSG? Can they win the Champions League? Maybe. Can Ronaldo somewhere and still with Man United shine for a few years? Absolutely. Is the World Cup for them in this year their final real sw sw uh, uh, swan song? Without a doubt. All right, let's talk about that transfer window. I mean, gone are the days. Neymar, Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo dominating these summer transfer headlines. A few big moves this summer, but uh, let's talk about winners here, TR. Uh, give us, take us through your, your, your winners yeah. for the window. You might say, oh my God, Sterling gone, Jesus gone, Ake maybe gone as well. Yeah, if that happens, it's 160 million. Bring in, boom, Holland and Kelvin Phillips, an area where they Two areas they really needed to address. A real number nine, but so much talent going forward. I say Manchester City did their business early and did it well with Haaland, obviously, the key. And talk about Champions League right now, that's the guy that got put Pep Guardiola over the top with the Champions League. <laughs> Brilliant. Can't wait for him to start playing. Already a big touch, Manchester United. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> Liverpool second. Nunez, huge, but don't forget about Fabio Carvalho and Marquinhos, a young player from Sao Paulo. Arsenal, yeah, Jesus and Fabio Fiera from Porte. I put them third right now. Tottenham still working on it. Langley is there, they need a centre back. Richelson is there as well. Perisic is there as well. Good business for them. Chelsea, a bit of a question mark, but I'm telling you, Todd Bowley will, will get some other people over the line, so to speak, and, and, and we'll get it done. Tottenham ahead of Chelsea again, Tommy. That's okay. I'm okay with that. They made some big moves. Uh, but you know what, what stands out to me about that list, by the way? Of the six teams that TR put out there, they finished top five yeah. in the Premier League. So that does not bode well for the rest of the Premier League. And then with Leeds United well, losing. Almost a billion spent, Tommy, already. The rich getting and, richer. And, and four out of the top five have spent $400 million. And we're not even close to the end of the transfer yeah. window. They're going to shatter the billion-dollar mark, which is pretty incredible. I, talk about your team, Sterling. Kulibala could be an option right now. For Napoli, yeah. That means yep. they become better. By the way, Leeds United losing out on Rafinha. Or Fabrizio Romano saying the deal is complete with yep. Barcelona there. Uh, let's wrap things up with MLS. Uh, Wayne Rooney hey. returning <laughs> as a manager this time with D.C. United. Uh, Darby County, or Darby there, didn't always uh, go well for him at the end, Tomos Rangan. But what do you think about his return to the U.S.? I, I think it's a perfect marriage. D.C. United needs a jolt. They're, they're in the cellar. They're the worst team in MLS, or one of the worst teams in MLS. So, and, and Rooney did that as a player, quite frankly, uh, and, and can do it now as a coach. I think it's a very good move. Darby prepared him for this. Darby was a mess. He couldn't sign any players. They got points deducted. Uh, he had to work with a very limited squad. And MLS is a very, very tough league to coach him and that's what uh, Phil Neville said as well you know Wayne Rooney is going to come into a league which he knows but with all the restrictions it's tough I look at Patrick Vieira who used NYFC and MLS as a springboard to go to France for two years and now he's in the EPL at Crystal Palace Wayne Rooney will use right now you know DC United if he can get him up into the playoffs the next year or two there might be a move to the EPL for him afterwards I, I think it's brilliant that Wayne Rooney is coaching right now yeah. will be fun do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.